The Last Straw Read by Grandma Hosh Makakaw, the old camel, was asleep in the desert night. He dreamed of all the water in the world and a hump that would hold an entire sea. And hearing voices, Hosh Makakaw opened one eye. Hosh Makakaw, Hosh Makakaw. Reluctantly, Hosh Makaka opened the other eye. Why should I wake up? He grumbled. The sand whirled up into the moonlit sky. You have been chosen, the voices whispered. The sand seemed to shift again. You will carry gifts to a baby king. Who are you? Hashmakaka wanted to know, for he was an old camel, and he felt he had earned his sleep. You will carry frankincense, myrrh, and gold. The wise men have chosen you. Hashmakaka got up very slowly. Why me? If these wise men are so wise, don't they know about my joints, my gout, my sciatica? What did you say I am to carry? How much will it weigh? And besides, I have commitments. Mm -hmm. There's a water drinking competition in Rangal. And then I must really go to the cud chewing convention in Beamish. The sand blew furiously, cutting into the black night. Hashmakaka was startled and decided he had better do as the voices said. Who knew what made the sand move like creatures with great wings? Um, when do I start? He asked carefully. Today. And at that, the sand voices disappeared and it was morning. It was still early as the servants of the wise men placed the precious gifts on Hashmakaka's back. The young camel ran, camels ran to their good friend. They all looked up to him because he was old, and they thought him wise. Oh, you must be very special, camel, they sighed. Huh, I am very special. Hashmakaka puffed out his chest in pride and then said something a little foolish. I'm not old. I'm still as strong as ten horses. And I have been chosen to carry rich gifts to the new baby king. Can we come too? asked the youngest camel, who never wanted to be left behind. Are we not your friends? shouted another. You can walk beside me, Hashmakaka replied in his most regal voice. And the long journey began. At noon, a herd of mountain goats came into view. Hashmakaka thought that they had come a long way from their mountain home to the north. What is it you want? Hashmakaka called out. Oh, we have heard tell of the new king who is to be born. Please take our humble gift with you. It's milk for the king. You want me to carry milk? Hashmakaka sputtered in shock. I am not a milk-burying camel. I am not ordinary like you. The young camels chorused. No, he is not ordinary. And they looked up to him with their big brown eyes. He's strong. Why, he's as strong as ten horses. Hashmakaka muttered to himself, oh, oh, my joints, my gout, my sciatica. Aloud, he said grandly, well then, give me your gift. At one o'clock, 
he was stopped by a family of millers. Look, said the youngest camel, they're carrying bags of ground corn. Do you suppose it's for the new king? <laughs> They'll have to carry it themselves, Hoshmakaka replied. They can follow the star like the rest of us. The young camels crowded around Hoshmakaka eagerly. But you're so strong. You're as strong as ten horses. Hoshmakaka felt weary just looking at the bags, but he said to the millers, Give me your hairy, heavy bags. I'll carry them. At two o'clock the next day, young ladies gave Hashmakaka their fine silks. At least it doesn't weigh anything, he thought. And at three o'clock, an old man in fine clothes gave him two rare birds in silver cages. And at four o'clock, some merchants gave him pillars of oak that came all the way from Lebanon. And at five o'clock, a group of bakers gave him their finest sweetmeats and pastries. And at six o'clock, the sun finally went down and the crowds melted into the coming night. And Hashmakaka gratefully sank into the sand. In the kind darkness, he didn't have to pretend. He was as strong as 10 horses. Hashmakaka became aware that it didn't seem as dark as usual. He looked up and he saw the splendor of the skies and the special brightness of the star he had been told to follow. And he fell asleep wondering about the sand voices and the wings he had thought he could almost see. And as the sun rose over the desert hills, it was hard to remember the wonder of that star, for the new day brought new pains and new burdens for Hashmakaka. I don't think I will make it. I can't carry any more. My legs are getting weaker. My gout, my sciatica, my joints. I'm too loaded down. A word of the caravan had spread like sand before a desert wind, and people lined the route, holding up their gifts for Hashmakaka to take to the baby king. There were jars full of honey and baskets of money. There were large rolls of leather and jewels and beads. And last but not least, there were 20 gallons of wine. Hashmakaka moaned to himself, this will bring me to my ruin, this fruit of the vine. But then the youngest camel cried out, Look, there, it's Bethlehem. You've made it, Hashmakaka. You are as strong as ten horses. Hashmakaka knew he could just do it if he did not stop until he arrived at the spot beneath the star. He could, he knew he could. And just then, out of the growing darkness, a small voice said, I have a gift for the baby. Hashmakaka looked down on a tiny child. Please, child, no more gifts. It has no weight. It's long and light. It's for the king who is born this night. It's little the child added. Too little is too much, Hashmakaka whispered. Well, did I not hear them say that you were as strong as ten horses? asked the child. Oh, well, yes, I am, sort of. But my joints, my gout, Hashmakaka looked into the child's eyes and his heart melted. Yes, child. Give it to me, this smaller than small gift. What harm can it do? It's for his bed. It's all I have. No problem at all, said Hashmakaka bravely, if foolishly. All this time, Hashmakaka had kept walking because he knew if he stopped, he could not start again. Now he could see that the star shone down upon a lowly stable. 
Child, do it now. Place your straw upon my back as I approach the new king. Hashmakaka entered the stable. Oh, my knees are loosening. My legs, they wobble. My back is breaking. Will this last straw cause me to fall? And with that, Hashmakaka fell to his knees. Oh, my, he thought, this is no way for a camel to behave. They will say that Hashmakaka, the weak camel, Hashmakaka, the proud camel, should not have traveled this far. The wise men noticed Hashmakaka, and quickly they too knelt. They're mocking me now, falling on their knees, heads bent over like gnarled old trees. And then, from the humble manger, a tiny hand reached out and touched Hashmakaka. His pain seemed to disappear. He could no longer feel his burden. Hashmakaka whispered to the baby, Hosanna from Hashmakaka, accept these gifts kindly. They come from far and wide, but were brought by a beast who once acted blindly. From that time on, there was no burden, great or small, that Hashmakaka would not carry.